Hello there, my fellow fans of role-playing, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today we shall return to the fascinating and insane realm of the Screaming Vortex. Now, we already learned quite a bit about this region during the last two videos, but I am more than happy to tell you that that was only scratching the surface. There is a lot of interesting, bizarre and unique locations in the Screaming Vortex to keep you entertained for a long time to come. Which is why today we're gonna delve right back in and talk about a particular planet known as Casal. Unfortunately, there is very few pictures on this actual topic, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Do stand till the end and vote on a future topic as well. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Somewhere around the gloaming worlds, in the outermost layer of the Screaming Vortex, a particularly persistent world of warp energy surrounds the sorcerer planet of Casal. And it is here that the sorcerer technocrats of the cities of Tarnor, Velclear and Surgub have held sway for over 800 centuries by their own reckoning. A nigh-on inconceivable time span in real space. The High Loremasters of Velclear maintain that Casal, at the beginning, lay at the center of the Screaming Vortex, but has gradually moved away from the center and towards the periphery. On the other hand, the Scroll Wardens of Surgub counter that by saying the opposite, that Casal began at the periphery and now is moving towards the center. The Archivist Savants of Tarnor can add their weight to neither view, having been struck mute by decree of the Archkestor of Tarnor for a period of no less than two centuries in censure for their outrageous utterances. And so on it goes on Casal. Casal is a rich and prosperous world that would seem familiar to the inhabitants of a civilized world of the Imperium. The clean lines of its glass-towered cities, overlooking plains covered with well-tended agriculture, its air alive with the movement of flying vessels. In space, a docking ring and shipyards work constantly and a variety of sleek-hulled vessels can be found moored there. On closer inspection though, all of this seemingly ordinary activity reeks of the most potent warp spawn sorcery. That includes everything from demon-forged engines to spaceships powered by rune-inscribed menhirs. Spells and cantrips are implicit in every kind of technology in an arcane fusion of magic and science. A great many peculiarities append to the inhabitants of each of the three major cities. But, as a rule, the people of Casal appear to be handsome-featured humans, neither young nor old, and with neither children nor the infirm ever to be seen. They treat all the outworlders with disdain, and for the most part, they view them as errant slaves to be taken in hand when necessary. On occasion, the machinations between the three cities lead to one or more of them to open up trade with outworlders for an extended period of time and then just as abruptly to end it. When trade is underway, the soul forges of Casal work day and night while demented choirs of demons pipe spells of alteration and change. These sorcerer technocrats will trade for only one thing, souls, living in the form of slaves or already captive in traps or spirit stones. When they are available, the weapons and starships of Casal can fetch astronomical prices and are easily recognized by their sinuous curves and deadly efficiency. The dark stories that cling to the artifacts of Casal do little to dissuade eager warlords and pirate kings, even though by some twist of fate they often lead to the meteoric rise and fall of their owners. The three major cities of Casal are very distinct from one another and frequently at war with one another, either covert or overt over a variety of imaginary slights and antiquated territorial claims. Full war between the cities had not been visited upon Casal in several centuries, for fear of the destruction that would be unleashed. In past times, fleets of sorcerers floating silver towers, attended by squadrons of flying warlocks, 
would ravage the landscape while legions of unleashed demons fought to mutually assure destruction in an orgy of violence. A number of locations on the surface still bears the scars of such arcane conflicts. Places where reality is worn thin and demons are held in check only with the most stringent pacts and wards. Some say that the current three cities are only the survivors of an original nine cities. The rest destroyed in Eternacine War before the current reckoning of time began on Casal. A fragile peace emerged with the three cities. Carefully balanced by pacts stating that overt hostility by one or the other will be met forcefully by the other two combined. The sorcerer technocrats can still find loopholes and exceptions in plenty to prosecute their schemes, but reality cracking magics are kept in check. The city of Surgub is built on an island in the bay of the great river Krelex and claims to be the oldest of the settlements of Casal. Of course, this claim is hotly refuted by Tarnor and Velclear. Surgub is ruled over by 14 factors with palaces in the highest steeples of the city. They only meet in a strict pattern according to the lunar phases. By their decree, any action that might distract them from their deliberations at such a time is punishable by death, or banishment, or even reward according to their whims. In the past, infractions have been recorded for a multitude of ridiculous reasons, including whistling, not whistling, riotous public assembly, inconsistent verbosity, unwelcome eruptions, and snark remarks. The measure of the worth of a sorcerer in Surgub is determined by the height of his tower. A law that has caused the city to grow vertically rather than horizontally into a crown of crystalline spikes many kilometers high. The highest ranked sorcerers seldom descend from their heights, living out their lives in the clouds far beyond the grip of the common mire beneath. These sorcerers of Surgub often weave warp enchantments to levitate them several inches above the ground when they do have to go down. That is in keeping with a belief that if a sorcerer sets foot down upon the proper ground, they will lose all their power. The second major city of Casal, Velclear, lies at the southern extremity of a chain of mountains far to the north. This city is ruled over by a tyrant elected every 49 years and by tradition the features of the past tyrants are carved into the mountains surrounding Velclear. Over the centuries, the practice has covered the flanks of the mountains with hundreds of stern, hollow-eyed patrician faces, giving Velclear the common name of the City of Faces. In opposition to Surgub, Velclear's towers are squat, round-bodied structures of green glass which are often broader than they are tall. The sorcerers of this city show a great passion for astronomy, and the tops of many of the towers are given to arcane observatories and gigantic astrolabes. The astronomer-scientists of Velclear strive to carefully track every heavenly movement and astral conjunction in the screaming vortex. They make obsessively complex calculations, they plot horoscopes, and predict the flux of the warp to discover the most auspicious periods for their undertakings. It is said that the sorcerer of Velclear can guide a vessel through the Materium with astounding accuracy, rivaling even the greatest navigators of the Imperium. Thus, even the greatest Chaos Warbands would consider themselves lucky to have access to one of these sorcerers as a navigator. Even just a Velclear star chart is of colossal value. Last but not least, the city of Tarnor occupies a region of irrigated desert west of Velclear. When seen from afar, it appears as a mass of domes and spheres tinted a thousand scintillating colors. Whirls of amber, vermilion, carmine, shot through with bubbles of cobalt, lavender, and sienna. The sight of Tarnor gleaming beneath the desert sun can strike the unprotected blind. At sunset, these innumerable hues of the cityscape merge to make colors undescribable by mortal terms. The sorcerers of Tarnor wear a variety of placid-seeming masks whenever in public, changing them several times a day in correspondence to the chimes rung throughout the city. The spoken word is frowned upon, and a complex system of ritualized gestures is used to undertake even the most basic transaction. 
a visitor that abides by these strictures will find themselves feasted and entertained in great style by their silent hosts. Although cautionary tales abound of guests who, in the spur of the moment, caused great offense by exclamation of their delight. Part of this obsessive silence extends from their bizarre love of music. It is said that a sorcerer of Tarnor cannot pass music being played without stopping to listen, and that they will bestow amazing gifts on those who bring them a new instrument or an unheard tune. By night, the curving streets of Tarnor echo with the weird strains of otherworldly melodies and alien harmonies. This mad profusion of instruments can achieve a dissonance that at times can overwhelm the senses and blast the ears. Or, in better times, it can transport your soul on sublime breezes to a place of paradise. For today's poll, there is plenty of variety. Option A is another interesting demon world of the vortex. Option B is a non-planet, maybe something like a haunted ship or anomaly. Option C is something different altogether, away from the screaming vortex. To vote, just write your choice in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Screaming Vortex and the very intriguing sorcerer planet of Casal for today. Funnily enough, this place actually sounds quite civilized and maybe even worth visiting. If it wouldn't be inhabited by filthy heretics, of course. Did you know about the magic world of Casal prior to this episode? Is it among your favorite places of the Screaming Vortex? I'm only asking because there's a ton of other lore-rich planets and places here as well. Do share your thoughts on it, or questions if you got any, in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.